For more, let's bring in RBC's Halima Croft. She's also CNBC contributor. Halima, great to have you with us. You actually believe they will actually cut production, which has always been the, oh, they say they're going to cut, but they don't really cut. See, well, Melissa, what is different this time is when we think about OPEC cuts, you have Saudi Arabia usually backs barrels, boards with barrels. I mean, they are the ones, when they announce a cut, they deliver. The question has always been about some of these other producers, the free riders. They've talked about some African countries being free riders. Russia has been a, a free rider as of late. What is important about the cut announced yesterday is it is a Saudi unilateral cut. So I think that gives us more confidence that Saudi Arabia will deliver on that million barrel a day cut starting in July. The question is, though, if now a one month cut, will they extend it for the remainder of the year if oil prices fail to rally significantly? Why do you think oil was not able to hold on to its gains then? Today? I, mean, I think there's still really strong concerns about demand. I think there are really strong concerns about you know, the broader economy, you know, rate hikes. Some people are saying in the market, if Saudi Arabia has to do an additional million barrels a day of a cut, what does that mean about the demand outlook? Now, the Saudis were saying it's a precautionary move. They want to give more confidence to the market. But I think people are waiting to see, you know, how this cut pans out. And we are expecting a better back half of the year. We are expecting inventory draws. But right now, there still is significant concern about the demand outlook and the broader economy. Halima, the, you, you're, you're, you seem to be very confident, and I, I, I'm going to listen to you because you're often right, about the relationship within OPEC Plus between Saudi and Russia. Um, it seems to me that all the gains that at least have been kind of supply-related around OPEC, uh, OPEC Plus have been because they've been together. They've been unified. There's been, there's been cohesion. So your point is that you think Saudi is, is not worried about Russia, not worried about that relationship? I mean, that was a clear message that the Saudis delivered. Now, going into this meeting, there was some speculation that the Saudis would seek to take back market share in Asia. We've seen a significant surge of Russian barrels into India and China. Those barrels can no longer go to Europe because of sanctions. And so people were speculating that Saudi might want to get back their market share in that key region. But the Saudis were really clear. They do not have any desire to resume a market share war, and they are not particularly concerned about Russian exports into Asia. They said to us, we're still the top supplier into China. We have sent more barrels into Europe to backfill those Russian losses, and we're not particularly concerned at the moment about Russian production. So given the push-pull in terms of, you know, the cut that you think is actually going to happen and, the, and, you know, demand destruction because of global slowdown, Halima, where do you think prices will be? I mean, we're still optimistic on the back half of the year, and we still see, you know, a path for Brent prices to return to the 90s. Certainly, the Saudi decision, we think, is, you know, important for inventory draws, and we'll be watching very closely. We're coming back to Vienna in July whether the Saudis extend that cut. I mean, certainly there's always the broader macro concerns that can send oil lower. But from a fundamental perspective, we think the Saudis have sent the signal that they're willing to come into this market to at least defend the floor. And I think that's an important point as well, that they are really concerned about preventing a major sell-off in oil.